welcome to Spirited Away Yoga. I'm so excited to see you all here today for again our last Designs for Zen of 2020. Goodbye 2020 and goodbye weekly yoga routines. That being said, we are going to continue to do one the last Saturday of every month going forward. So as yoga says, and in many other places say, when there's an ending, there's also a beginning. And so this is the beginning of the last Saturdays of the month, yoga. And of course, it's always cosplay. And our theme again is Spirited Away with myself as Haku. So to get started today, again, find a cozy spot on your mat. We're going to be doing the best of, and this is my best of, my favorites that I'm sharing with you today. So if it's not in your practice, don't worry. I've been working on a lot of these for many, many years. So I don't expect for any of you to be the same as me. That's why you are you. Finding your seat, you can either stay sitting, cross-legged lotus, or I like to do the broke toe hero, which we did last week during our shoot style yoga, where you tuck your toes under and then you sit back on your heels. And if you didn't see that shoot style yoga, it's on YouTube. So either find a comfortable seat or maybe do this challenging seat here as we get started. Focus on strength and poise. Notice your breathing. Is it heavy? Is it light? Is it in your chest or your belly? And maybe bring your attention to your chest or belly. Notice the grounding between your legs, your feet, maybe your tailbone. Maybe close your eyes or have a gentle gaze as you begin to deepen those breaths. And my favorite breath that I like to do is a square breath. Again, you can find whatever breath works for you to warm up your lungs and oxygenate your blood. So to begin, inhale, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four, and hold it out, two, three, four. In, hold, exhale, hold, in, hold, Exhale, hold, in, hold, exhale, and hold. And I like to try and slow mine down now. Let go at whatever pace, whatever breathing works for you. Focus on your breathing, especially if you're in broke toe with me. Use that to distract yourself away from the discomfort. If there's any pain, stop. But the discomfort is that stretch. And I can start to feel it now. Focus on your breathing for two more long breaths. One more. And once you've gone through your cycle, come back to your normal breathing. And just to make sure we've gotten rid of all the negative energy, we're gonna go through lion's breath. And I'll come up here to show you. Again, lion's breath is a big exhale. You stick out your tongue, you roll out your eyes, and you roar like a lion. So this is what it looks like. We're going to do two. One to laugh at ourselves and two to really cleanse. So inhale. Lion. Reset. Inhale. Let it go. Good. 
And if you are in your broke toe, maybe come to lotus or cross-legged as we begin to set our intention for today. So again, I am dressed like Haku, the dragon changing and spirited away, who guided and supported Chihiro, the main character who is in the spirit realm. And Haku did everything in his power to keep Chihiro unharmed, to gain her trust and to help her to leave the spirit world safely. Today, you might feel fat from feasting from the holiday week we've had, just like no face. Or maybe you feel energized like Chihiro, ready for what's next. Maybe you've got that new toy or gift. Either way, I as Haku will help you to find your way through this practice safely. And I hope that you enjoy the journey. To start off with, we're gonna set our intention. For me, my intention this week again is new beginning. It is going to be the end of the year. We will be in 2021 this time next week. Hooray! So think of your intention, whether that's new beginnings, new peace, love, or whatever it is. Just take a moment to set your intention. And with me, we're going to inhale, arms up. Put your palms together, draw them to your heart. We're going to seal our intention, as always, first with one breath. And then a deep breath in. And let it go. <sighs> to start with, I always love doing my shoulder rolls, so we're going to start with them. Rolling up, back, forward, and down. Those four points that we have done together for so many weeks now. Really extend and articulate those four points, noticing how your breath is here. Inhaling as you're going up, exhaling as you're going down. Ah, oh, really get into it. And then go forward, down, back, and up, opposite direction, finding balance in our journey today. Do a couple more. And I'm going to switch my legs and put the other one on top as we begin to go through our neck rolls. So first, straighten your neck, roll those shoulders back. And then take your head to one side. We haven't done this together for a few weeks. So your ear is going towards your shoulder. You can use your nose to try and angle your head and maybe find a sticking point where your neck's really tight. And you have the option of the hand on the side your head's leaning towards, gently placing it on your head. And maybe extending your ha opposite hand and arm, just finding stretch through the side of your neck and down your body. Breathe here and again, and adjust with your nose. Just feel that nice deep stretch here. And we're gonna stay here for a little bit because I love this pose and this is my best of practice. If you need something else, go right ahead. Just keep breathing wherever you are. And maybe lower your hand. Just breathe one more breath into it. And then you're going to slowly roll your head down towards the middle, very slowly. Let it hang here for a moment. Maybe you take your hands and again, just gently place them on the top of your head. Keep that spine straight. And then lower your hands and start rolling your neck to the other side. Gently, gently. Until you find the other side where your ear is towards your shoulder. Use your nose again to find where your head needs to be looking to really get that stretch. And then take the hand on the same side maybe and just gently press. Feel that stretch along the other side of your neck and maybe use your opposite hand and arm to find where it needs to be to really intensify that stretch. And again, explore by moving your nose. When you find that tight spot, just breathe into it. Maybe relax just a little bit before you deepen again. Remember in yoga, 
When you find that edge, back off just a little. Don't go too far. Just find where you are today. A few more breaths here. I'm just lowering my hand and just letting my neck do it now. Just a little more. Oof. Just letting it go. And then roll back down. I'm going to rock my head from side to side here. Just loosening my neck in the front. And then you can deepen that roll. Again, only doing a full neck roll if it's available to you. No pain. And you want to go slow. Guiding again with your nose here. Going both directions if you're doing circles to find that balance. I'm actually stopping and not going around all the way because I am a little tight. And breathe as you're going down. Inhale as you go up. Kind of looks like I'm a possessed spirit doing this, doesn't it? <laughs> and then find any other movement you need in your neck and shoulders here. Maybe even give your neck a little rub, remembering our myofascia release, our massage yoga we did together. And again, that one's also on YouTube if you haven't done it. Mm, that feels good. And if you have that ball handy, you can use it right now. Again, this is your practice. Ooh, my neck is sore. <laughs> Honestly, we could do this for the rest of it, but let's keep going. So we're going to inhale, arms up, and then exhale to the side. Inhale up, and then other side. And I like to take big motions, and I like to go really slow, but if you like to go fast, or you like to do small motions, go right ahead. Do what you want here. And then I like to plant and twist. And look back, now I'm pointing with my nose again. On the inhale, lengthen, and the exhale, maybe twist a little more. And then up and to the other side for our deep twist here. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, maybe twist a little more. And then inhale up. Exhale, fold forward, really walking your hands forward into a full forward fold. Again, remember to use that block for your head if you want. Finding ease here and keeping those hip bones down. I like to, when my head is down, I like to roll it from side to side here again, just working on the neck and forehead. And then we're going to find our way into all fours. These are some of my favorite stretches, and you're going to hear my favorite a lot here. <laughs> so from all fours, again, find a blanket under your knees if you need to. Knees and hands should be shoulder and hip width apart, and you should be able to put your weight around the outside of your fingers and palms, but not in the middle. Pressing down with the backs of your feet here, and we're going to start with those cat cows. So exhaling in a cat, inhaling in a cow, and really using your chest here to shine through. Focus on moving the chest and not the tailbone. Really focus on your breathing too. And then start to find movement where you need to, maybe looking from side to side, maybe waggling your tail. I personally, again, really love to do big hip circles here one way and the other. And again, your hands don't have to stay still here. And then I really, really like to go forward and open those hips up, coming almost into a seal and shining the chest through. So this is different than um, the up dog. In your sun salutations, if you're doing an up dog, you should be lifting up and your legs should not be touching the ground. So it's like this. This, with your legs down, is different. Uh, that's one of the biggest mistakes. And it is a mistake. If you're doing your up dog, you should keep those legs off the ground. And if you can't do it, that's when you do like a baby cobra, right? Because it can hurt your spine. 
and your shoulders. And so really, I had a shoulder injury doing that. Okay, so we're back here. And now what I like to do is they're kind of like doggy fire hydrant stretches. So you lift up your leg and you're just doing circles with your hips here like you're reaching out for a fire hydrant. <laughs> right? And go both ways, maybe straightening your leg, whatever you need to just warm up that hip bone. Keep focusing on keeping your body parallel to the ground so you're not shifting to the side. And that really works on your balance here. And then I kick back like my foot is flexed. See? Focus again on keeping your body straight and level here. And then on the exhale, put it across the other leg and then look back at your toe. So this leg is behind the other one. Again, if it's available. If it's not, just keep stretching however you need. Or maybe you just do a normal lunge and just stretch back. I like to just look here. You can almost see your bum if you do it right. And then, this is the fun part for me, you keep your toes on the ground and use your hips to circle your leg to the side. Trying to come into a modified gait. Remember gait, where you're like this? And if you want to come into gait, I'll just show you what it looks like. Gait, you can. I like to do it as a modified gait, so I have my hands down like tabletop. My legs are in gait. And then I like to sink back onto my heel <laughs> and lower down again if it's available for you. You can bend your legs. You can find something else, maybe even child's pose. And I just breathe into it. And then remember to push the outside edge of your foot down if you can. That intensifies the stretch. I love this stretch. You're going to hear that so much today. And then walk your hands back up if you were down. Really lifting, keeping your foot there. And then lifting and rotating it back. And giving it one last stretch. Maybe tuck it in before switching to the other side. And I'm, uh, I'm going to turn around just so you can see how it looks here. Maybe I'll do it at like this angle. So we're starting here. First, we're doing that fire hydrant, right? It looks weird. Fire hydrant. So lifting it and moving your hips around while keeping your hands in tabletop and your body parallel. And go in both directions. I keep my foot flexed here, but again, you can point your toes if you want. And then you step back and you can either stay here in this kind of modified runner's lunge or with me, you take your foot across so it's behind, see that? And then you look over at your foot, breathing. And then keeping your toes on the ground, you drag your foot around Round, 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 until you get into your modified gait, your full gait, wherever you are, keeping those hands where they need to be, keeping the spine straight, shoulders back and down. And then if you're with me, walking down, sinking your bum towards your foot, just like we started in Hero, trying to keep the outer edge of your foot down and then lowering. If it's available, you can always use a block or find something else. And breathe here. And I'm noticing this leg is much tighter. Feeling a lot of stretch. The inside of my hamstring here. Just breathe into it. No pain. And wherever you are, find your way back up. Gently, maybe kick back, pull that knee in, find whatever stretches you need to really let that hip go. And then we're going to do our shoulders. So we're still here. I spent a lot of time in this. We're going to do our shoulder flosses, uh, which uh, thread the needles, which we haven't done again for quite a while. So from your hands and knees here, inhale one arm up, looking at the hand. If it's available, if not, you don't have to look up. 
exhale hug yourself so your hand is sweeping under and hugging your ribs inhale up and hug and then one more time up and this time we're threading the needle by taking the hug taking your hand across and under and then lowering onto that shoulder and you can stay here or you can take the other arm up you can put it in front or what i really like to do is a bind so it goes behind my back and reaches my other thigh <laughs> so it's going up to my leg on the other side and i'll show you what that looks like when i do the other side here you don't want any pain but you really want to focus on opening the chest here relaxing the head and shoulders and again if there is pain find something else that works for you and then unwind yourself pressing back inhale reach the arm back up again come to all fours center yourself here then inhale other arm up looking reaching stretching and then hug through inhale up hug through and then again up and this time threading the needle on the other side so arm goes under and through shoulder goes down okay so now again you have the option of this arm going straight up coming forward or the bind is the arm is up it goes behind the back and can stay here or it can grab the leg see i'm a little bendy do what works for you relax here find ease Again, I can spend a long time here. We'll do it again at the end, though. Wherever you are, unwind yourself. One time, reach up. And then come back to all fours. We're going to do loaded beast. Tucking our toes under. Putting our hands down. Lifting our knees just barely. Just barely. Holding ourselves here. Shoulders back. Focused. Core engaged. Love, love, love loaded beast. And then if you want, you can hold this and step through. This is from animal style. We're coming forward into a forward fold. So again, keep a bend in your knees. Hang loose. Find what you need here. <sighs> Shake your head yes and no. And then inhale halfway lift exhale fold inhale all the way up and from here we're going to be doing some flossing so you really want to have a strap of some sort it can be a belt a tie a towel a t-shirt oh. ties work pretty well and it should be pretty long we did this i think in staff and strap yoga and again those videos are back on youtube so i've got my hands pretty wide across the strap and i'm putting it down shoulders back actually i'm going to adjust it a little more it gives you time to find those straps there we go okay so inhaling with my arms pretty wide and the closer your hands in the harder it is the wider they go the easier it is so we're going up together and if this is as far as you can go that's great try to keep your arms even here if there's any uh imbalances between the arms you'll really notice them here arms shoulders and then i'm just turning so you can see here so i'm trying to keep my arms together it comes up and then keeping the grip the arms start to come back and down and again this is only if you have very healthy arms and shoulders but that full rotation right there is flossing and if you have a sticky spot like right here for me you can just kind of bounce back and forth just like we did with the neck rolls this really helps to clean up any gunk in your joints keeps all those cartilage and bits moving and trust me i'm not the anatomy wizard but i do know that this is pretty nice if you can do it so just do a few adjust if you need and if you don't have a strap you can do it without 
just trying to keep your hands on the same plane. It's a little bit different motion when you don't have that staff or that um, strap. Obviously, a, stra a staff is less flexible, so I like straps. Okay, so that's flossing. Then you can put it down and just kind of wiggle your arms. We're also going to be doing the hand bind. So you can use a strap here. Put it in one hand, lift it behind your head, and then grab it. <laughs> if you can find it, there we go. And th if this is enough, you can go right there, or you can try and come closer. And for me, I like to do the actual bind. This side is much easier than the other for me. You see how it is? That's why I'm wearing black. <laughs> and then exhale, switching sides. And you're going to notice for me, this is much more difficult. Really trying to find it. And again, if you can't find it, don't. Find ease. And then let it go. Ooh. All right, next we're going to do our arm stretches, right? So I really like to put my arms together and stretch them out. This is another way you could do flossing just by raising it up and back. And then, of course, we've got to do our chicken dance. So arms up, hands on shoulders, just do rotations here. These are all warm ups, you can do them in any order really fun. <laughs> and then of course we do the Macarena. So hand out. This is a good one for our carpal tunnel. And then the other side. So you're just going like that. And maybe doing some wrist stretches and rolls, whatever you need to get those arms and wrists going. And wherever you are, we're now going to go into our eagle. So this one is a different one. If you can only do chair, that's fine when you lower down. Except this time we take our arms, bend them, <laughs> put them over each other. And then lift up. And if that's what you can do, there we go. It's like this. Or you can try and twist it one more time and get your palms together. Like this. This or this or this doesn't matter. I like this one. And then when you're in your chair, the arm that's under, the opposite leg goes over. And then you twist it around and sink into it. So it looks like this. Again, it's a difficult pose, something I've been working on for a long time, but you can play around with it here. And when you're breathing, try to lift the elbows up, shoulders back. Unwind, other side. So then you crisscross. And then the opposite arm that's under goes, or the opposite leg of the arm that's under goes over. Like this. Elbows back, shoulders down. <laughs> and shake it out. All right, most of what we do is warm ups. I'll be honest, I like twisties and I like warm ups. <laughs> so, next we're gonna do some good leg warm ups as I catch my breath. <laughs> I start in a lunge, just a normal lunge. I really like to stretch my back leg. I do this one all the time, even in the shower. <sighs> Hands can go wherever you need up, down, cross, back, bind in the back. And then from here, I take my arms up, and these might feel a little weird. They're kind of not yoga stretches, but I like them anyway. So I take my arms into warrior two arms, but I keep my legs where they are. Notice which hand is in front. Then inhale and put the other arm in front. So you're doing a reverse twist. Your hips are going to rotate here because your feet are planted. And you can go back and forth if you like. I usually just do one each side. 
Maybe even look behind you, stretching your neck here. If you're losing your balance, try and widen the distance between your toes or between your feet. Come back up here. Then hands down. I do airplane arms. Really look up and just stretch my chest here. And now we're going to do a little bit of balance. So put the weight in your front foot. And you're lifting and balancing here. Coming into that hamstring and quad stretch. So you grab your foot with your arm. And then hold your toes. Just stretch your leg. Shoulders back and down, breathing here. <sighs> We're gonna go into dancer from here. So you're still holding your foot. Hands can be in the big toe or the inside of the foot. The other arm comes out. And then you start to hinge at the hips, kicking your foot into your hand. Leaning forward. Finding your balance, keeping the standing knee Bent just a little. Do not lock that standing leg. <laughs> and if you lose your balance, that's fine. Wherever you are, try to hold your leg and pull your knee in now. Give it a hug. Again, not locking that standing leg. Then cross your leg over. Here, I'll turn. Cross your leg over the front. And then switch hands and open your hip here. I love doing these stretches. This is why, uh, ooh, did you hear that pop? I'm pretty, pretty good at it, but it's a balance challenge and it's a stretch. So just, you can kind of go into that, like that little the hip hop move, right? It's all about having fun and doing stretches that work for you. So I do that on one side. And then what happens is when you lower that leg, you can step it forward and bang your on the other side now. So coming into our normal lunge, your heel can be up or down. I like to have a nice bend in my back leg and the heel is up just a little, but the feet and the toes for me are parallel. And again, you can widen your stance if that helps with your balance. Then inhale, arms up, shoulders back and down. Breathe here for a moment. So the arm that's on the same side of my legs going forward first, as I transition my arms and torso into warrior two, I can actually get my back heel down here. Maybe look at your back arm, then back forward. Remember which arm's in front, inhale up. Other arm goes in front, twisting here. Now my ankle and my back foot are up a lot more. Looking to the back and the front. And then both arms up. Exhale down into airplane. Chest up, looking up. And now remember, we're switching into the balance of our front foot, keeping the knee bent as we go into our hamstring stretch on this side. Grabbing your foot, holding your balance, not locking that standing knee. Breathing here, shoulders back and down. And again, find balance, find a wall, find a chair if you need it. Maybe do these seated if it works better. From here, we're getting ready to go into dancer other side. So find your grip on your foot. Make sure your standing leg is nice and strong. Arm goes out. I'm actually just gonna scooch back so you can see it better. And then kick that back foot into your hand and start to tip at the torso, focusing your gaze in front of you. And then maybe if you can, Holding it, coming back down, pulling your knee back, up, hugging it in front of you. Woo. Opening it up. Crossing it over. And then just play around with it. See what else your hip needs. And when you're ready, we're just going to come back down. And we're going to do a gorilla here. So gorilla fold as you're inhaling up, exhaling, coming down into your fold, keeping that bend in your knee. Your hands go flat down, so you're stepping onto your palms. Your heels are down, but you lift your toes and you just scooch your hands in there. So you're standing on it. Your toes you can actually massage your wrists here because the tip of your toes might touch your wrists. So you just wiggle your toes, let your head go. Keep those knees bent and just, if you want, you can bend your elbows to pull it in a little more. So again, have fun here. And 
and then let it go. And I'm just walking my legs here. Okay, inhale up, and then down. Let me adjust my angle again. We're going into our peak pose here. One of a couple, this is a standing peak. So another one that I really, really love is Bird of Paradise. And if you've never done it before, the transition is the hard part. Okay, let's try that. So we're going back into our Warrior Two, actually. So from here, inhale. You're gonna step, let's see. I'm gonna do this foot first. So you're stepping back. And then for Warrior Two, you're opening up. So this foot is now at a 45 degree angle as opposed to what it was before. If you want, you can do a quick reverse warrior. We're going into extended side angle. That's where we want to be. So this knee is bent. This arm comes down onto it. So same arm, leg. I'm actually adjusting my stance. Then the best way to get an extended side angle is actually to sweep your arm from the bottom until you get to this nice little angle here. And you can breathe. And if this is all you can do, stay here. So you want to be able to not put your weight in this, but it's just a prop. You want to challenge, you can extend that arm. So it's like this. And what we're doing from here is we're going to, again, if it's available, you can put a block here. Or if you can, this is step one. Again, if this is enough, it's good. So my hand is flat. It's next to my knee. They're actually touching. Your arm can be here. You can come to a bind. But what we're going to do is if you can come into that bind, that's the next step. So my hand is behind my back. I'm going to turn just a little so you can see here. So this hand is now free. Okay, and if that's enough, that's good. So you're just doing kind of a balance here. But now I'm going to twist that arm around the leg, almost like you're doing Bird of Paradise. But instead, I'm going to reach underneath and try and grab my arm. So notice that warm-up we did before. Oh. This is what it looks like now. So I have the bind. Wait, there we go. It's kind of hard to show you. There we go. <laughs> Hi. So I've got that bind. And again, if that's enough, that's amazing. This took me years to figure out. And maybe you're awesome and I already know it. Got the bind. Now comes the switch. This back foot, you need to get to the front. So focus on, just like we did before, putting the weight in your front foot, and then scooch your leg up, keeping your balance, being safe. Maybe even walk in that foot. So now you're standing in a squat with a bind. Then you put the weight in the other, that back leg. So the one that you're binding, use your arms to lift your foot, and maybe just get to your tippy toe here. See how it's just lifting? And if all you can do is get in your tippy toe, that's awesome. And if you're with me and we're going into Bird of Paradise, all the weight is now in the not bound leg. And you're pushing with that leg and lifting and lifting your foot up the, off the ground. And if this is as far as you can get, that's great. And if you're with me, with strength, we're lifting all the way up. And if this is as far as you can get, that's great. This last part I'm not very good at. Straighten the bound leg. And that is Bird of Paradise. <sighs> Lowering down, putting the weight back in the bound leg, stepping the not bound leg back, we're unwinding, hand down, arm back, up. We're actually gonna go into lizard here. So if you were any of those, we're finding lizard by putting both hands next to our leg on the inside of it. I'm scooching this back. You can put your knee down if you want. That was really tough. <laughs> and then wherever you are, you can stay here or again use a block. And you're lowering down to get a good stretch right here. So it looks like this. Finding your lizard. <sighs> Let your head go. And then walk your hands up. And if you want here, if you need blocks, they're helpful here. You walk back into like an extended split. 
And do that maybe a couple times. Again, we're just giving our hips a little extra love. Okay. That was one. We got 15 minutes, so we'll do the other side, and then we'll cool down. How's that? Okay. So now we're back here. I've got my hand on the outside of the foot, the other one here, tucking my toes under. If you want to do a flow here, feel free. Go to your down dog. And we're just coming back into warrior two on the other side. I'm actually just going to stretch this one out a little bit too. And then step through. Coming up. Warrior one. And then I'm just going to rotate so you can see this side. So warrior two opens up. Back foot, 45 degree angle. Maybe you do a quick reverse warrior. We're going to find our way to a side angle. So front arm comes on the other side, scooping our arm up. And if this is it, you know the drill. Find ease wherever you are. If you're with me, try to lift this arm. Make sure that your abs and core are holding you up. Maybe try to lower to a block or the floor. <clears throat> Maybe try and find the bind. Then with this free hand, the one that was on the bottom, scoop it under and try and find the bind here. And if you're bound, you can start to walk that back foot up, putting balance in your front foot. <laughs> it will be different on this side. Then, with your feet even, put the weight in what was your back foot, using your arms, lifting your toe. And again, if that's all you can do is lift that bound toe, you're good. And then maybe, maybe float. And maybe, maybe lift. Maybe start to straighten. Again, no pain. This is my weak shoulder, so it's not going to look as good. And I'm actually going to loosen my bind here. And then maybe, maybe straighten. Whew. Whew. <laughs> and then wherever you are, find your way down. Step that foot, unbind. Oof. Untwist. Both arms are now on the inside of the foot, finding lizard. I'm lowering my back leg and then lowering to my forearms or a block. Breathing into it. Let that neck go. And wherever you are, come back up. Hand on the outside of the foot. Walk your hands back, maybe using blocks. Just stretch the hips here. Whew. <laughs> And now, we're coming back. We're going to go into our dog. Again, maybe shake those legs out. We're going to go to pigeon because I do like this one too. So from here, take that other leg this time, put it back up. And maybe you do a couple ins and outs. But what you want to do is take the knee towards the same side wrist. And you bend it in, but then you do an angle that works for you. So my foot is here. Oh. And then your back leg is out. You want to find balance here. So your chest is straight. Maybe put a block under your hip if you need to. And you're going to walk down. If it works for you. Or you can just stay up. And this could be enough here, but if you want to look at the screen, this is where... You can do a little bit more of that threading the needle that I promised. So the hand that is opposite the leg that's forward, lift it up and then thread it through so it's pointing the same direction as that leg and then rest on your shoulder. And maybe this hand that's free now can reach behind you and you can actually find your toes that are on the bent leg and just hang here. Again, only if there's no pain.
And wherever you are, start to unwind and come back up. But keep those legs together. We're going to do my little bonus stretch. <laughs> so first you come back into that straight pigeon. Great posture. Really holding your body up here with your core. And you may need um, a cushion under your knee here. What I'm going to do is bend this knee. And if this is enough, that's great. Maybe you want a strap. Put it around the foot. And maybe that's good. But for me... I will grab this and pull it in. Now I haven't done this in a hot minute, so we'll see if I can get into it. So I've pulled my leg in. Now I'm straightening up and I hook my feet into the crook of my elbow, hold my body tight and try and find a bind. This one took me about three months to figure out. And then find your way back. Maybe go back into your dog. We're switching sides here. Again, just things for you to play around with on those weeks when we're not together. And feel free to message me if you want some tips. Or just Google, because there's a lot of good YouTube videos. All right. Opposite leg up. It comes forward. Your knee comes to the same side wrist. Find where your angle of your feet and knee needs to be. Scooch that leg back. Find poise here before walking forward. And again, maybe the opposite arm of the knee that's forward comes up, threads through so your hand is pointing the same direction as your knee. And here you can see my toe ready. So I'm reaching up with the other arm going into the bind and look at, where is it? There's my toe. I got my toe. Wherever you are, just breathe and relax. Start to unwind. Hmm. We're coming back up again. And again, if you need that padding or the strap, bending our back leg. First, just seeing if we're flexible here. And again, if that's enough, go right ahead. And for me, I start to scooch my arm so that my foot's in my elbow. See? Then I really use all of this core to lift and find my tie. Oh. And then come back down and roll onto your bum. We're going to do some windshield washers here. That's it, you guys. Maybe even take your legs and shake them out. Whew. I said it's what I like. It doesn't mean that's what you guys like. Okay, let's pull it in. I'm lowering myself down. If you want, and if we had time, I'd go through boat, but we're not going to make this a 90-minute practice. <sighs> Bring your knees in. Give yourself a nice big hug and really roll it out. I love to use my knees and just use my hands to guide them. So I'm doing big circles with my knees here. Really, like, forward and back even both directions, just to see how my hips feel. And then hug your knees in. We're going to let one leg go. I like to roll the ankle of the knee that's up. And we're coming into our twist, so use your arms and guide the knee across, keeping your shoulders down. And step where you need to. Remember, use your straps or your blocks if you want, even a cushion. Blanket. The goal is not to have your knee and foot touch the ground, it's to keep your shoulder blades and then open up your spine. <coughs> Excuse me. <sighs> and normally I'll stay in this one for a couple minutes too, but we gotta get you guys to bed, so inhale up. And then open the knee on the other side, just like we did standing, so your knee is coming out. And over. And breathe here for a moment. And pull it back in. We're switching sides. Rolling the ankle on this side. 
pulling the knee in and crossing over again finding what you need maybe looking the opposite direction and then opening it up and taking your knee all the way across And now we're going to hug your knees in and we're going to go into our boat pose. So from here, our feet are by our bum. And we're going to plant our hands and our shoulders lifting our hips here and if it's just a little that's fine and if it's more go right ahead so and spirited away they met at the bridge imagine your bridge here let it down we're gonna do one more so get ready and then lift up maybe again using that block or strap imagine your bridge here And then lower down. Find any last movements you need here. I really like to go into a diamond. Maybe even use that as your savasana so your feet come together, your knees fall open, and you make that diamond. Maybe even with your arms. We're going to get ready for your final savasana. I wish we had time for more, but that's what next year is for, right? So find those movements, get yourself cozy, find your favorite Tavasana. Maybe you use that block or pillow. Coming to relaxation here. <sighs> Roll those shoulders back and down. Release your ankles and wrists, your legs and hips shoulders and arms maybe roll your neck from side to side and moving your head and then release your jaw and the tongue from the top of your mouth release the stress between your eyes and maybe rub your hands together here and just place the palms of your hands on your eyelids just to gently press your eyeballs back in Or if you have a weighted eye pillow, you can use that for the whole savasana. And then lower your hands, keeping palms up to receive energy or maybe palms down to ground. Relax the entirety of your body from toes to head. Come back to your breathing and your intention. And if any stray thoughts come up, just notice them and let them glide through the river onto the bridge and away. And I will call you back from the Savasana in a few minutes.
begin to deepen your breaths if you'd like. And if you want to stay here longer, feel free. If you're with me, start to roll your wrists and ankles, deepening your breath. You start to come into a big full body stretch. Mm. Really feel your body after that intense twisty workout. And as you're ready, roll over onto one side and stay there for a moment longer. Toward the end of Spirited Away, Chihiro remembers falling into the Kohaku River, the one of which Haku was a spirit which helps him remember his real name and his past. This frees him both physically and mentally. As this year ends, decide what you need to remember and what you should let go of. Find peace as you go on. And begin to come to a seated position keeping your eyes closed, or you can invite a gentle gaze. Finding that comfy seat, rolling your shoulders back and down. And on an inhale, arms up, drawing palms together and pulling them into your heart center, coming back to your intention of enjoying the journey or whatever it is you chose today. And decide if you'd like to keep it or find something else to help you find peace as you go on. Keeping that in mind, we'll do two breaths. First to clear. And then a deep breath in. And let it go. And then draw your thumb knuckles to your forehead the center of your knowledge and intuition, and the light and love in me. Honors and thanks the light and love in each one of you. Thank you again for joining me on this yoga journey, and Happy New Year. Namaste. Thank you all for joining me. Again, please follow me on Facebook and all of my social media at Rifting Designs to find out what you, next year will bring for Designs for Zen. And until then, take care, everyone.